Hey there, Julian here, and welcome to member scripts number six and seven. So first let's go over seven just because it is super easy. It'll take like 20 seconds. So if I go over here and I refresh, what we're going to notice is there's nothing and it just gently fades in. So how do we do that and why do we do that? Let's talk about the why first. So sometimes when you're pulling items from member JSON or something else even, there is a slight delay. So there's going to be a flash of content that's not supposed to be there before it actually settles. So this is a way to stop it from showing up right away until the right content is there. So all that we have is this code right here, and you're going to want to copy this and paste it into the head of your page. Good to go. The only thing is I have it set to one second, 1000 milliseconds. And if that works for you, which it probably will, you're good to go, leave it. If you want it to be a little bit shorter and potentially a bit less reliable, you're going to want to shorten this. And if you want it to be very reliable, uh, but also take longer, you can raise it. So I would say no longer than 3000 milliseconds or it's a bit ridiculous. Then all you're going to want to do is the following. Go over to whatever element it is that you want to actually hide. And you could just set this blank attribute ms-code-delay and that's it. If you have that, everything within this wrapper will be delayed according to that script. So that is number seven. Now let's talk about number six. And first, let's actually try it out. So if I go over here and save that, what we're going to notice is it updates. Let's do another one. And it updates again. Now let's go over here, do something. It updates. And all of this, of course, will save on refresh on different devices everything because it is storing in the member json so if we look over here at our test member which i had set up um there is no json because i haven't refreshed but when i do refresh that form is actually going ahead and updating it and creating these little subgroups with unique ids and all of that um, and also these can be updated at a later date there is a lot of possibilities with this one and also if you notice over here, what we have is two separate lists that are saving to two separate groups. And you do not need to do this. You can only have, you can just have one if you'd like. Um, but the goal here is to show you that you can have as many as you want. And even these placeholders are different, differently styled within Webflow. These ones are very similar, but of course you can make these placeholders however you want. So now let's talk about how to actually do that. First of all, the member script itself is right on over down below this stuff. We have number six, create item groups from JSON. So everything within here, you can just go ahead and copy and paste and you're good to go. You will not need to change anything in here. Everything after this is all about attributes. So first of all, we have our forms up here, which creating these groups is covered in a different member script. but as you can see here for projects, for example, we've got our form two projects and the correct names applied to each one. But then what we have over here is this. So first of all, we have our list and this is where everything is gonna be placed inside. So we have ms-code-print-list equals projects. And what that's pulling from is this this list that is created. So yours, maybe it's projects, maybe it's something else, but it's saying put the projects inside this list. And then we have item. So this is ms-code-print-item projects yet again. This is saying turn each of the projects into this specific thing. Then within here, what we have is our text and this is applied like so. Each text block has the correct um, field associated with it. So ms-code-item-text is project name and due date. And what that maps to is over here, we can see those. So that's showing what to pull. So that's all you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to add the attributes to your list, your item and everything within your item to display it. And of course, follow member script number two if you want to learn how to actually save that list to begin with. So. That's it. If you have any questions, just let me know, julian at memberstack.com, and I hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy.